Aloha, and how you doing? Welcome to Hibachi Talk. Gordo the Texar here. It's been a long time. It seems I've been traveling around the world watching the University of Hawaii football team and having a lot of fun. I got Andrew the security guy. I almost Aloha, forgot everybody. your name. so long. Yeah, you've been gone too long. <laughs> Way too long, man. And, and our guest today is Charles DeJoux. And Charles is hey, really welcome. Yeah, thanks Charles, for hey, thank, thank you very so much for having me on. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> it's really great to have Charles on the show. So, you know, you get someone that's willing to take the risk of coming on Hibachi Talk, man. That's really funny. <laughs> right in the heat of the campaign. <laughs> yeah. How many days left? <laughs> Six and a half weeks. Six, Six and, and a half, half weeks. weeks to coming go. on really yeah. fast here now. Yeah. Wow. And and you know what I liked about it is what you walked in by yourself. There was no entourage. No. Where's the press corps? Where's the it's like, watch you talk. I'm yeah. just going to show up. Right on. <laughs> you know, he, I he need my, my volunteers got to be out there. We're campaigning. That's so right. We're at the same time here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, slave driver. Yeah. Some things never change. So, so anyway, we, you know, the way this format of the show works, we like our, our viewers to get a sense of who, who, who our guests yeah, are and so on. Yeah, and yeah. so we have some Canadian viewers. We actually have a Canadian viewer that went to see you at a, a community meeting. Oh, no kidding. When oh you were gosh. in city council. Oh who watches God. this show? That's awesome. <laughs> so anyway, we just give us a little your background like where did you grow up where yeah, did you go to sure. school that kind yeah, of stuff yeah yeah well I, I grew up here uh, uh in in the islands uh went to print home don't hold that against okay. me okay uh, <laughs> uh, and thank you for joining us yeah. <laughs> 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 but um yeah after high school I, I went to college at the university of pennsylvania in philadelphia studied uh, there i studied at the wharton school of uh, finance uh, i got a business degree over there then went to law school at usc um uh, came back wow. home, worked for for a uh, law firm for a number of years uh, was in the legislature, then went to the city council for seven years before getting elected to the Congress. Right. Uh, married, uh, got three kids, yeah, a boy and two cool. girls. Um, perhaps, though, th in terms of my background, the yeah. one thing I get asked more than anything else, yeah. though, uh, Gordon, is uh, where in the world did I get my last name from? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Andrew yeah. asked. Yeah. 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 What is it? What, yeah. What's, what's, what's okay. 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 So this is this is this is the background of my on my last name here. Okay. So. My last name, Dijou, D-J-O-U, is okay. actually misspelled Chinese. Okay. My Chinese name is actually, should have been translated Z-H-O-U. Zhou. Oh, Zhou. Right, Zhou. Okay. That's my Chinese name. My, my father was born and raised, uh, born in Shanghai, raised in Hong Kong. My okay. mother was born and raised in Bangkok, Thailand. Okay. But the story behind it all is, is that uh, my, uh, my dad, or my grandfather, uh, my father's father, he got this odd French translation of his last name when he immigrated, coming out D-J-O-U instead of Z-H-O-U. Yes. Ah. And so this is how you have this pocket guy with all of you <laughs> with a really weird last name here. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I know because I yeah. keep wanting to go D-I. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I understand in French, that is how it is written actually in French. It should be D-I-J-O-U. But yeah, I got, uh, whatever. It's an immigration creation. It's an immigrant story. Nobody has this last name unless you're related to me. I know. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> but isn't that yeah. awesome about this country, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, my parents were immigrants into Canada. I immigrated yeah. it to the yeah. United States. That's the beauty of what this country yes. is. We can, we can <laughs> but they, they, they didn't misspell here, yeah. Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> but they, yeah, well, it's true. It's true. So anyway, we're going to get into a couple of topics. Yeah. One of our things we do in our show, and I'm going to set you up on this one. Okay. It's got, it's got, it's, you know got one tech job. And what okay. we do is we go around town and we take pictures mm -hmm. of things that yeah. You know, that probably the person that was involved wasn't a technology yeah. type person. So we got a shot here. This is, you know, got one tech job. Now you got to look close at this. This might look familiar to you. Yeah. Those are not billboards, construction billboards, billboards. downtown. These Honolulu. were the rail cars one or three days after they arrived in Honolulu. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I've got to yeah, lead yeah. you. i got to lead yeah. you into this. We already got a question <laughs> yeah. on, on Twitter. <laughs> what does it say? I can't read that part. Given all the oversight, how do you think the rail project got so mismanaged? Let's yeah, throw <laughs> <laughs> well, that one right well, there. There was, <laughs> there was a lack of oversight. I mean, that, that was the basic key problem here. Okay. Actually, if I could pick up on that on, on the screen, which you guys were showing, yeah. those rail carts here. I mean, it, it is in some ways the perfect symbol of all of the mismanagement we've had going on with this rail system. And let me explain here. Okay. Um, these rail carts. We purchased them what a little over a year or two years ago or so. Right. We're not going to use them for several more years here. Right. Let me just put this in the minds of all of your viewers, all of your listeners yeah. here. Uh, you know, my middle child right now, she is 13 years old. She will not drive for at least another three or four years. Would I buy a car for my daughter today <laughs> when she won't be able to drive for another five years? Who does that? Yeah. Other than our city government, which went out, bought these rail cars, which we're not going to use for years, and the only use for them is graffiti canvas. And yeah. these things cost hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, that's crazy. And it is just one, I, I think, good symbol of this whole larger problem we have with this rail system. It has been horribly mismanaged, incompetently led, 
and we have problems like this. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, this one, this one blew me yeah. away when it, yeah. when it came in and said, okay, wait, how do you, how, do, how does this happen? Because, yeah. you know, Andrew's yeah. in the security business, the yeah. physical security yeah. business. It's like, how do you put these in a warehouse and then yeah. have this happen? And this yeah. is like, you didn't do this artwork in like 15 or 20 minutes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. obviously, when you yeah. pro project manage it, you, you would have the security on yeah. and in place before you yeah. put the assets there, right? Yes. And yes. that's yeah. I, apparently didn't happen. I yeah. don't I don't know yeah. the details yeah. of how these guys yeah. were there long enough yeah. to do that much yeah. painting. Well, you know, Andrew, it, 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 it ties into this whole rail project and what was going on with it here, and that is, it has just been so rushed. I mean, everything mm -hmm. about this system has been very, very poorly managed. Everything about it was, well, start rush, 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 rush. Let's rush the construction. Let's put in the pillars. Let's put in the the, the buy the rail carts super early, under the assumption that if we build it, they will come. If we build it, everything. What could possibly go wrong? Mm -hmm. that, that <laughs> right. And then now, of course, as after we have rushed all of this here, we find out here we have cost overrun after cost overrun after cost overrun. We have endless delays here with the system. And now today, ironically, we have the opposite problem. After rushing the construction of this rail system, the city is now running out of money. And we're telling the contractors, oh, whoa, whoa, slow down, slow down, mm -hmm. slow down. And I hear from so many contractors, subs, um, they're getting paid, but I mean their payments aren't getting prompt, uh, aren't prompt. Interesting. A and I think that is yet another example mm -hmm. of incompetent management mm -hmm. of this rail system. It's sort of this herky jerky. Mm -hmm. We'll rush, 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 and then slow down and rush and slow down. And it doesn't matter whether you're in construction or you're in technology. Any time you have management like that. Um, you get bad results. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, and, 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 and there's so many entities overseeing it, though. You've yeah. got you've got the heart board. It's yes. the heart. You've got yeah. the heart board itself. Yeah. You've got Move Oahu forward. Yeah. Um, you've got yeah. the city council. Yeah. You've got the administration. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, yep. Yeah. You know, uh, Gordon, you're, you're right. There's a lot of fingers uh, all over this rail system. A lot of people, you know, trying to just push one way or another here. But ultimately, at the end of the day. The buck has got to stop with the chief executive of the city government. Okay. That's the mayor. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, you know, I, I understand the mayor has a lot on his or her plate at any given time. Granted, the mayor has to do, lot, do lots and lots of things here. But the reason you're supposed to run for and want that top job is because ultimately the buck is supposed to stop with you. Right. And so if you have heart and you have these consultants, you have the city council, you have all these different people tugging, pulling, pushing all these different ways here. It's a recipe for disaster, but the remedy for that has been and will always be the mayor. The mayor. And that's the one person who's in charge and the one person who needs to step up and take responsibility. And get, and get involved and make the yes. tough decisions right. and even though it's not going to be popular yeah. across yeah. all the boards, whether yes. you be the yes. construction yes. people, yeah. the right. project managers or whatever, right. you've got right. to be the one that in Absolutely. There doing that. And that's the one person to whom the people need to hold accountable because Ultimately, like it or not, at the end of the day, that's the one person, one elected official, who the people can validate and keep in office, or say, hey, look, this thing is so gosh darn screwed up, it's time for a new management Tunch team. new management yes. team. Okay, so taking that, no, yeah. we, got, we got a lot of stuff we got to yeah. cover. Okay, yeah. we'll go. I'm go. going to keep this thing going. Okay. Okay. I'm, and I'm, you know, it's, it's, hey, it's my show. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And, I, and Andrew pays for it, so that's the yeah. beauty of that's it. <laughs> dollar, dollar 99. <laughs> yeah. So the other thing I'm, I'm really interested in, and I think it kind of fits with, um, with, with the reality, is this whole thing in, with ethics, what's yeah. going on with ethics. Yeah. You know, yeah. Now, I'll go out right up front. I, I spent a lot of time with Chuck yeah. Toto when mm -hmm. I was down there. I mean, mm -hmm. it was in, in a lot of time going into his office and saying, yeah. Chuck, I'm thinking of doing this. Yeah. And he'd go, okay, we'll get back to you. And he would always give you your pros and cons of how yeah. to do it. Yeah. And he'd say, you know, you can yeah. do it, but yeah. then you're going to have to deal with the ramifications that may come yeah. later. Yeah. So now I'm getting all concerned, like, ethics is all getting closed yes. up. You know, yes. I mean, yes. can I, as a director, if I was a director, can I go down and yeah. talk to them now? Yeah. No, you, you know, Gordon, you have more familiarity than, than the average person, having been a member of the, the, the mayor's cabinet. What has happened with the City Ethics Commission has been a complete travesty. You know, Chuck Tato, as you pointed out, he was the City Ethics Director. Right. And he was the Ethics Director for years. For a decade. And, you know, and he, he butted heads with a lot of very strong personalities. I mean, Me? Yeah, yeah, you. You? <laughs> and no, me, me, not Gordon. Really. <laughs> <laughs> but after all this time, d dealing with Jeremy Harris, with Mufi Hanneman, with, with Peter Carlisle, although he butted heads with them, I felt he was always fair. And I people yes. recognize that. Yes. The tragedy is, is that Kirk Caldwell gets elected, and all of a sudden he hits all this turbulence. He starts asking some questions about the mayor's political fundraising. And today, he basically was forced to resign from his position because he was asking the quote unquote wrong questions about the mayor's fundraising practices. And mm -hmm. Gordon, that is wrong. We need an ethics commission and an ethics director who's tough but fair 
and is not under the thumb of the mayor's office. Right. Because uh, integrity in your government, basic underlying trust in your government, is the foundation of any democracy. And here in the city and county of Honolulu, if the ethics director can get railroaded and shoved out of his job... Oh, railroaded. Because, yeah, nice, nice move. Yeah. <laughs> Good segue. Yeah, I'm working on it here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to fix that. We've yeah. got to fix it. We in our community here in Honolulu deserve better than that. Yeah, so I mean, that's, a, that's yeah. exactly what we got another tweet yeah. said. Ethics can be a growing problem across the spectrum of government. Yeah. How do we fix it? Yeah. Uh, Several things here. I mean, uh, the, the micro, in terms of what do we do with the City Ethics Commission, for me, it has to be a commission that is completely independent of mm -hmm. political pressure. And for me, if I'm fortunate to get elected mayor, what I look forward to doing is allowing the Ethics Commission to submit their own budget, separate and apart, and not be subject to review, as Mayor Caldwell has done, from the Corporation Council's office or the Mayor's office mm. here, and, and allow the Ethics Commission to be this independent body to give fair unbiased, non-political advice, mm -hmm. or, or in the, the horrible situation where somebody violates the ethics code, to give uh, a straightforward, blunt prosecution of, mm -hmm. of a particular matter. Right now, unfortunately, what we have is that, in the words of, of my former opponent, Peter Carlisle, ethics has been eviscerated here in the city, and mm -hmm. we deserve better. No, we deserve we better. This is not the way a government is supposed to run. I yeah. mean, it's, it's like he's the cops right now. Yeah, I mean, wow. speaking yeah. of cops, I mean, it's the same thing. You know, like, yeah. I've never seen the police department in yeah. such disarray. Yes. Yes. I've never seen... Um, there's a community services thing now. Yeah. There's an audit. They got to be fifteen point nine million dollars back yeah. to the federal government. Yes. I mean, there's all this kind of stuff just keeps yes. keeps yes. coming yes. out. And I remember under 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 Mufi and love him and hate yeah. him or hate him. And I love Mufi, yeah. but I never voted for him, which when the first time around. Oh. <laughs> but you, you told him that before you went to work yeah. for him. So, didn't I never knew yeah. that. so when I became the director the yeah. first time and Mufi brought me in, yeah. Mufi said to me, "Is there anything that I should know?" I said, "Yeah, I never voted for him." <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but anyway, so when I when I came in there, one thing that Mufi required us all to do yeah. every year as directors was go through ethics training. Yeah. Every year. They yeah. made it required. Yeah. You had to show up. Yeah. There wasn't, yeah. It wasn't an option. Yeah. And Chuck would go down a yeah. number of scenarios. Yeah. You know, yeah. some current, some not yeah. so current, yeah. to, to yeah. help us understand yeah. what the borderline was. And yeah. I always used to get into it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, just amazing yeah. what's yeah. happened yeah. on that yeah. side. Now, uh, Gordon, you're, you're exactly right here. We, for years, decades, have had all these boards and commissions that have been, in some ways, sleepy. The, the Police Commission, the Ethics Commission, what's going on with the Affordable Housing Fund. Nobody really paid much attention because they were running smoothly, quietly in the background. But now, under this current administration, we see problem after problem after problem. You know, and so, in a lot of ways, I describe this to, to people, uh, Gordon, is when you, uh, any uh, voter out there, you look at what's going on here in the city. Whether it's rail, or the police force, or ethics, or affordable housing, or ambulance, or whatever it is. Ask yourself the simple question. Do you think the city today is in a better position than it was four years ago? I mean, it's a modified of, of what the president, you know, once yeah. said here. But it's the same concept. Do you think we're better off today than we were four years ago? Or not? Yeah. And that's a, and that's a, yeah. That's a yes or no answer, Yeah, right? it's very simple. And that actually should guide you on how you vote in this upcoming mayor's election. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. You think there's going to be a big turnout for the election? You know, of course, as a candidate, I always want a big turnout here. Right. I always want the people to participate. I am, right. however, very disappointed that, unfortunately, I think, you know, here in Hawaii, we have the lowest voter participation rate in the United States of America, and that's an enormous tragedy. Uh, I'm always cautiously optimistic, but, uh, you know, this election here, I don't know. This is a crazy election. Not just for the mayorship, which I'm running for, but, I mean, the national is even more nuts. Well, that, we're, let's not go there, though. Yeah, that's, <laughs> no, we're not. That, that, that's yeah, really, just, really crazy. It's yeah. only a 30-minute show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to take a break. Okay. So, so we have a guy called Angus is going to come, but he's going to ask you, he's Scottish, so he's very okay. he's <laughs> Scottish, which is kind of like Chinese, very tight with his money. Yeah. So, anyway, he's going to come and have, ask you a question or two, and um, then we'll continue on from there. Anyway, Gordon the Tech Star, Andrew the Security Guard, Charles DeJou, candidate for mayor. We'll be back in a minute. Good afternoon. Howard Wig, Code Green, SyncTechHawaii.com. I appear on Mondays at 3 o'clock, and my gig is energy efficiency, doing more with less. It's the most cost-effective way that we in Hawaii are going to achieve 100% clean energy by the year 2045. I look forward to being with you. Aloha. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, meeting people we may not have otherwise met, helping us understand and appreciate the good things about Hawaii. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here. I know you're bored this summer. 
You're just sitting at home, figuring out what to do, go to the beach, spend some time with Think Tech Hawaii. Spend the time thinking about how you can contribute to Hawaii and making it a better place to live. And start watching some of the programs on Think Tech, including Stan Energy Man, where you'll learn all about everything energy, especially hydrogen and transportation. So we'll see you every Friday at 12 o'clock noon. Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, host of Sustainable Hawaii. Thanks for watching Think Tech this summer. We have a lot of terrific shows of great importance, and I hope you'll watch my show too every Tuesday at noon as we address sustainability issues for Hawaii. They're really pertinent as the World Conservation Congress approaches in September and the World Youth Congress that's focusing on sustainability next year as well. Have a great summer and tune in at noon every Tuesday. Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Abatsi Talk, the energy security guy here. And I just wanted to bring up something we touched on earlier, and that happens all the time to us on construction sites, where uh, deliverables and timelines and, and ideas about a project get changed, right? And so we talked about some rail cars where they got delivered to a site that obviously didn't have any security ready to take care of those rail cars. So, you know, we, we have a fairly straightforward practice with that. You know, you, you put your assets where they're protected, and if you can't do that, then you got to put the assets somewhere else. So let's think about getting those rail cars somewhere else if there's not going to be security put in there, okay? Uh, I got Angus here, he's off the beach. I haven't seen him in a few weeks. Angus, what's going on, buddy? How you doing there, dude? All right, man. It's great to see you, lad. Right on, what? Charles, back. Charles. <laughs> it's, you know, Charles is a really Scottish name, but De Jou is not. I no, guess, it's I, not. I think they can how that works. Anyway, you know, you ever heard of this guy called uh, Marco Rubio? I have. <laughs> okay, but well, we got a wee quote for you. Marco Rubio, the governor of Florida stated, we need transparency in government spending. We need to put each government's expenditure <laughs> online so every Floridian can see what their tax money is being spent on. You know, my Scottish heritage makes me kind of tight with the money. I'm kind of like your Chinese heritage. Uh, uh, <laughs> I just was about to say that here. <laughs> Scots and Paquets. I mean, just That's like that here. Yeah. I like it. Yes. So anyway, my, my question to you is, and then now, now I'm going to go disappear back on the beach, but my question is to you, what are you going to do about transparency and government yeah. and making sure we can see where the money's going? <laughs> Absolutely here. You know what? I like that idea of putting things online so the public can see exactly how everything's are spent. And you know what? You have my commitment that if I get elected mayor, one of the first things I am going to do is call for an outside audit of the city rail system. So we know where all those billions of dollars went, and we're going to know where the money's going to go and how much it is going to pay to fix this whole gosh darn mess that we have. Awesome. That's what we got to do. That's yeah. awesome. I love it. So you heard it here first on Hibachi Talk. We're going to get an audit of the rail and all the spending. So anyway, this is Angus Matek saying to everybody as we every week, let your win gang free where you be. Aloha. Thanks, Charles. <laughs> Charles, so do you have any idea how much of the money that we've, we've used that we had and then how much more we've got to bring through? I mean, are we at a, a third? Where were we at overall in the budget for the rent? Well, well, we, well, we've already spent several billion. We've already uh, authorized a tax increase for $7 billion of okay. this rail wow. system here. Our problem here is, is we don't know how much it's going to cost to finish it. So I mean, that's one of the big wow. problems, yes. Yeah. There are some forecasts that say to finish the whole thing out, it'll be somewhere in the range of eight, eight and a half billion. But there are also some out there who have said it could cost 11, maybe even 12 billion dollars. Wow, 50% difference, sure. Yes, and this is a huge, huge problem here because the original cost was supposed to be 5.2 billion. So already billions over budget. Wow. And the, the question now here isn't are we over budget? It isn't are we billions over budget? It is how many billions are we going to be over yeah. budget? And that's These why it's important we get a, a mayor who's going to sure. look at the money here. You know, yeah. I, I, I hang Angus as the, the budget director you here. Help me, help me <laughs> the money he's, here, he's, you know. He's, yeah. he's some strange yeah. gadgets, so we need to watch him. <laughs> but so, the, uh, the good thing um, that I was thinking is you're, you know, you're, with your background at Wharton, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, did they give you business problems like yeah. that? Hey, you, you spent five mil, you're two mil yeah. over now, and you gotta, yeah. you're going to be ten mil over when you're done. Like, uh, yes, absolutely, which is why I, sure. I'm calling for an outside independent audit of the rail system here so we know where the money is going here. But again, the bottom line is the bottom line. You need a leader who cares about this, who looks at this here and understands that the people of our community are not made of money. We don't have yeah. an unlimited amount yeah. of resources Fact, here. That's for sure. uh, and it's easy to throw out these numbers, billions and billions and billions, mm -hmm. but we have to not forget at the end of the day, these billions are coming 
from families. Yeah, they're, they're coming, coming from sure. us. They're going to yeah. come out of our schools. They're going to come yeah. out of other so, important so things, yeah. right? Let me mention I something again because I, yeah. I kind of got insider information because I was you there. Do? Yeah, yeah. But back, you know, back when we were, um, we put a new financial system yeah. in the city. Mm -hmm. State of the art. It's mm -hmm. still there. It's just yeah. in, in, you know, and it was the team of of civil service that put yep. this in did a phenomenal job, yeah. and they're still on top of it. Yeah. It's a great job. All kinds of great reporting comes yeah. out of that system. Yeah. They used to put online the actual spending mm -hmm. by quarter by department, yeah. online and available to yeah. the public. Yeah. I went, it's not there anymore. Yeah, and, 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 uh, and that's wrong. That's wrong, because we in the government should never ever fear the people, especially when we're using the people's money. Right. And I think we need to do that with the rail system, and I think we should go back to doing that for the city at large. Yeah, and, and if, you, know, the, you can yeah. put the rail budgets out and yeah. break them down. Yeah. The city has a very good financial system, so, yeah. so no one can give you the argument, well, we yeah. don't have adequate technology yeah. to do it. I know for a fact they yeah. got one of the best in the, yeah. in the country. As a matter of fact, in 2011 or 12, the yeah. city got a Sunny Award yeah. National yeah. Award for Transparency yes. because they were putting up all this yeah. financial well, information. Well, what's happened yeah. since yeah. then? So, yeah. But it's not there anymore. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so why is the rail budget not up there? Yeah. Why can I not look at every monthly financial yeah. statement that yeah. comes out of the rail budget? Yes. They yeah. have it. Yes. And actually, I would take a step further. Not just a monthly financial statement. I think we should be having an electronic checkbook online. Yeah. So every check that the rail cuts is posted online here so that people know not just generally what we spend every month, right. but every penny can be accounted for. And that's not happening right now. That's why we need new leadership. Right. And I can do it now, yeah. and we, we can sit in it. there, yeah. we can analyze by contractor, yep. we can sure. analyze by contract type. Sure. Yep. We can see, we can take industry experts like yeah. you and security well, and say, why are we spending so much on security when I know the industry averages are yeah. in around this number? And that's where yeah. the audits can come in. Yep. Well, and where's the, like, the performance yeah. ratings on the contract? You know, in the DOD yeah. space, we get, there's yeah. always past performance ratings and all this kind of stuff yeah. happens while you're doing it after yeah. the contract, you always we have to give yeah. that to win other contracts. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of data there that we yeah. we're surely not seeing in this instance, yes. and yes. it's yes. much less common practice, you know, in yeah. you know commercial yeah, it's, space. It, it, but I mean, government, I think, uh, yeah. you know, muni gov should be yeah. held to that sort of standard, yes. in yes. my opinion. And if I could just also add here, it, it, this is not like it was just a a wastewater station or a highway on ramp or something like yeah. that. This is the biggest public works project in the history of the state of Hawaii. Yeah. This is a project, if we don't clean up this mess and clean it up right now, this is something that can suck down our whole city. I mean, this is billions of dollars our people do not have, billions of dollars which is being taken away for everything else in our city government, mm -hmm. whether it's homelessness, ethics, the police, affordable housing, all public of that Public schools, here. I mean, yeah. who yes. needs help yes. here? Yes. Yes. And the city owns a lot of the land that the I mean. public schools run, yes. and it's still a yeah. state issue. Right. But the thing is, you know, and where I come back to is, is this, um, the cooperation between the state and the city doesn't oh, seem to horrible. be there. It doesn't seem to be there. And I'll, give, yeah. and I'll go throw in my yeah. example. So the city, the state is estimated it's going to cost $100 million to put yeah. in a new financial system. Yeah. This is over 35 years old. Yeah. Now, this, as you know, Charles, DMV is run by the city and county of Honolulu. Yeah. That's a state function. Yeah. State ID is run by the city and yeah. county of Honolulu. That's a state function. Yeah. So the city and county of Honolulu has a great financial system, a great payroll yeah. system that's based on the union contracts, yeah. the same ones the state has. Why can't the state and the city get together and say, yeah. wait a minute, why don't we share yeah. this existing financial system that's yeah. already in yes. place? Yes, yes. And Gordon, it comes down to, again, a lack of leadership, a failure of communication between the mayor's office and the state government, a failure of communication between the mayor's office and the feds, and even a failure of communication between the mayor's office and the Honolulu City Council. We can't have that here. It, it is causing yeah, too, too much small. friction. It is, it is just small. crazy. You know, actually, if I could just add a real sure, quick illustration here. In. You know, um, I served in the United States Congress before I, 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 I visited I you there. there. Yes, that's right, that's right. You know, when I was a member of Congress, uh, you know, I, I got to sit down and meet with the president. Not a lot, but I mean a few times. Mm -hmm. I was horrified that when I talked to City Council Member Trevor Ozawa, uh, who represents now, took my seat, he represents East Honolulu. Right. I met in my one term as a freshman, one of 435 congressmen, I met with the President of the United States more frequently than City Council Member Ozawa has met with the Mayor of Honolulu. And there's only nine city council members, wow. and they work in the same building. They're only one floor apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. That is crazy. That is. That's absolutely crazy. We yeah. cannot well, have that's a government where, like without that Without the here. dialogue, yeah. that's, where the, that's why there's no management. Yes. There's no dialogue. Yes. So and no that's no why dialogue. it should that's be no deal. surprise to anybody why our city is in such a mess. A disarray. And why we need new leadership here in our government. You heard it yeah. on the Bocce yeah. Talk. <laughs> yeah, talking about it over here. I agree. I mean, I would walk down and go meet with council members and give them a heads up on what I was going to be doing so that when... 
I walked in there and said something, you had yeah. an idea what was happening and had yeah. to go do, and you all went and did your homework. Now, whether you agreed yeah. with me or disagreed yeah. with me, that didn't matter. Yeah. At least the point is we could yes. we could do point counterpoint right. and right. be and, and not be down each other's yes. throat. Because ultimately, government is supposed to serve the people. Yes. We are all working for the same boss. Yes. The people. The people. But the problem I feel so much is going on in Honolulu Hale right now. It's the other way around. It's an attitude that the people work for the government. The government somehow is more important than the people, and that's wrong. Yeah, we need to that, change that. That is, to well, that this, is totally This good. next question, they yeah. ask, how do we revamp? This is uh, emergency services, I guess, but to oh, address someone, yeah. costly yeah. abuses of the services. Yeah. So I guess there's people Yeah, we're, oh, we're, we're yeah. servicing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so let me explain this here, OK? okay. Uh, for the first time in, in a generation, um, we've had ambulance services actually go down here on the island of Oahu. Oh. We've had 12-hour shifts where certain parts of the island have just gotten no ambulance service. Wow. The reason for that? is, well, it's mismanagement, more specifically mismanagement of our resources of ambulance services. Mm. Now, one of the problems our ambulance services encounter uh, is that we have certain individuals, a tiny minority, who constantly are calling the ambulance. Uh, see. The average person out there will call an ambulance maybe once every five or 10 years. I see. But there's a tiny number of individuals who will call it repeatedly, three, four times a week. Oh, and, I remember and, and those reports. Like heart yes. patients or whatever they have. Well, those. no, it's actually they're disproportionately homeless. Oh, oh, and, I and, and they're using the ambulance as a taxi service. I see. Uh, they're, they're hungry and they need a sandwich. They're oh, calling so they're, the ambulance. So they're out in Macaha and they get all the way so, to yeah, town so, on it, right? So and let me, uh, and we only got a minute and a half to yeah. go, so I got to jump in real quick. Yeah. So there was a study done um, uh, that said that they should merge ambulance and fire. Mm -hmm. The study said yes, mm -hmm. and it would save money. Yes. It never yeah. happened. Yeah. So, yeah. it, so, so like, that's what we need to start yeah. saving money because yeah, we got to pay for this yeah. rail somehow. Yes, <laughs> yes, and that's one of the creative solutions I think we ought to be taking a look at here. But one of the things I want to do immediately yeah. is reestablish something called a community EMS program, community paramedics. Just very briefly, okay. it is that for the people that identify the top fifty nine one one callers, right? And instead of sending a regular ambulance to them all the time, uh -huh. we dedicate just two paramedics, right? Who Service only those so-called top 50 911 callers. Right. So we save the rest of the system for everybody else right. here. That's what makes yeah, sense. Yeah, because that would be tragic to cool. have an and abuser was, of yes. the system cost someone right. else their life. You know, right. who's a, and a non. You know, no it was reason. a mistake that the current administration eliminated that program. If I get elected, we're going to reinstate it because that makes Thank sense you. for all of us. That here. sure. Yeah, that sure does. That sure does. So Excellent. anway, believe it or not, we burned through. it. <laughs> <laughs> That's I know, okay. I, I, appreciate appreciate it. I got yeah. a list a mile long. So maybe we'll squeeze you back in. Yeah, yeah. But you know, no guest goes unrewarded. Okay. On this show. <laughs> so you get an autographed solo cup. This is number 87 in the series. Okay. Thank God it's not 86. Okay. Anyway, um, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so it's number 87 in the awesome. series. Yeah. You get to take that uh, awesome. with you. And yeah. When you're up there taking, you know, taking your, your oath of office, you can okay. yeah. have, 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 have a Havachi cup. I'm, I'm sure it'll we'll, sure be good for that. <laughs> hey, Charles. Hey, thank a lot. you very much for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing. Really appreciate and great luck. Thank was, you very much. It was a lot of fun. We have a little thing we do at the end of every show to tell everybody how it's going. So it's one, two, three. Okay. How are you doing?